9.3 intersection of two planes. So we have three possibilities here. We can have two planes represented by these little pieces of paper that are parallel and distinct. So they're never going to intersect. They could be parallel and coincident if I put them on top of each other. And the third possibility is that the planes intersect like this. So they intersect along a line. So you'll have a line of intersection and that's what we're going to do in this lesson. We're going to find the equation of this line of intersection. We're also going to check how do we know if they're simply parallel. Okay, so the first example I want to do is a parallel example, obviously. Nice easy one. So every time you find the intersection of two planes, first thing you want to do is check what the normals are. So you know how to find the normals. The normals, all you have to do is check the coefficients of x, y, and z here. So normal 1 is going to be 2 minus 6 and 4. And normal 2 is going to be 3 minus 9 and 6. So the question is, are these scalar multiples of one another? If you take a look at the ratios of these three numbers, you'll find that they are all two-thirds. So that's one way of doing it. The other way you might have done it is to say, okay, well, what if I made these coefficients to be the same? So I could do um, plane one, I'll mu multiply it by three, and what do I get? I get 6x minus 18y plus 12z minus 21 is equal to zero. So this is plane one three times it. And if I do two times plane two, you'd see I would get 6x minus 18y plus 12z minus 4 equals 0. So you can see that the normals, we can scale up or down the, the normals by multiplying by a constant. And in this case, you'll see now they're all the very same. Now, are these parallel and coincident or parallel and distinct? If the planes are coincident, it means that this number would have to be the same, and it's not. Okay, so therefore these are parallel and distinct. It's just like the y-intercept when you would do y equals mx plus b. You have the same slope, but a different y-intercept. So this is where you're seeing the difference, so these would not intersect at all. Now the second example I'm going to do is how to find the line of intersection. And there's a couple of ways to do this and I'm going to show you both because I think it's, um, it's something you should know and you're going to find it very easy. Maybe one way is easier for you than another. So you can pick and choose which one you like. So in this case we have two planes. So they're in, they're, um, pi 1 and pi 2, so that just means a plane, okay? So remember, first thing we want to do is check the normals. So what's the normal for pi 1? 2 minus 1 and 1. And the normal for the second one is 1, 1, 1. Now obviously we can't scale and multiply these to get the same plane or the same vector, so they're, that means that they are not parallel not parallel and they will intersect as a line. They will. There's no other option. Therefore, line of intersection. Okay, so here's the first way. The first way, the first thing we're going to do, and I'm going to get up my little pink one, is we're going to eliminate one variable. How are we going to do that? Well, just like you did when you were doing grade 10 math and you were trying to find some um, intersection points of two lines, you added or subtracted the equations to eliminate a variable. So here I'm going to just look at it right here, I'm not going to write it out again, because I can see I can eliminate either of these variables. I could get rid of the y's, or I could get rid of the z's. I get the rid of the y's by adding these two equations. I would get rid of the z's by subtracting the two equations. So I'm going to choose to subtract. You can do whatever one you want. It doesn't matter. And I'm going to end up with 2x minus x is x, minus y minus 
positive y is minus 2y. So be really careful with those minus signs, right? And z minus z, gone. Minus 1 minus minus 6 means minus 1 plus 6, which is going to be plus 5. Okay, so that was step 1. Eliminate one variable. And again, you could choose whatever one you want. Okay, now the next thing you're going to do is you're going to let either x or y, you're going to set either x or y to be t. So in this case, you're going to say, whoa, just a minute, say that again. Watch this. Set x equal to t. Now I could say x is equal to 0 plus t, right? I could say it's 0 plus t. So that means whatever t is, is what x is going to be. So we haven't done anything illegal here. This is quite a legitimate thing to do. So now I'm going to substitute in t, x equals t. I'm just going to write it like this. You see, I, I reduced it to that. x equals t, and I'm going to plug that in here, right, where x is. Why am I doing that? Watch this. It's going to be so smart. So t minus 2y plus 5 is equal to 0. And you can see I can write out the parametric equation for y here now. Watch. Minus 2y equals minus 5 minus t, or y is equal to 5 halves plus 1 half t. Okay, so now I know that um, I've got x and I've got y. Now I need to find z. So to find z, because I eliminated it here, I'm going to use one of these equations. I'm going to pick this one because there's less chance of me making a mistake. They're all positive. There's no coefficients. I don't have to multiply anything. So I um, just want to make sure I'm writing out enough rules for you here. Okay, so solve for y is this one. Solve for y, that's step three. And step four is going to be solve for z. Solve for z. And to do that, I'm going to plug in x and y. So first I'm going to write up my equation here of the plane. So x plus y plus z minus six equals zero. And x is t. And y is five halves plus one half t, and I'm solving for z, that's okay, and minus 6 equals 0. Leave it at that for right now. Okay, now let's move everything around here so we can solve just for z. So we're going to leave z here, we're going to add these up, that's going to give me 5 halves plus 1 half is um, 6 halves, which is 3, I just meant, I've got t, 5 halves plus 1 half. So what am I doing here? So t plus 1 half t, that's 2 halves and 1 half, it's 3 halves t. Maybe I should write this out very carefully. Um, so z is equal to, so I have 3 halves t, I bring it to the other side. That's going to be minus 3 halves t. I'm going to put it after, so I'll put my constant in here. And I have um, minus 6 plus 5 halves. So 5 halves, this is minus 12 halves, plus 5 halves is minus 7 halves. Bring it across, the equal sign is 7 halves, minus 3 halves t. And there you go. You've got everything you need to write the equation of the line. So I can say x, y, z is equal to, what's my point? The point would be 0, 5 halves, and 7 halves. 0, 5 halves, 7 halves, plus t times, and for x we have 1, for y we had a half, and for z we have minus 3 halves. And there's the equation of your line. So that was pretty easy, wasn't it? It wasn't too bad. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you another way to do it. Um, now, what you should note is that this point could be different depending on which one you eliminated and, and which one you set t to, right? These are going to change. So if, you know, you write a test and you say to your friends, oh, I got a different answer, you can always check to see, you can test to see if your point is on this line using the um, 
parametric equations, and you know how to do that. I'm going to do that in the next example as well. So let's look at this again, and we're going to um, we're going to use the same equation. So here's my equations here. So you have normal one. So normal one was two minus one and one, and normal two is going to be one one one. Now this is kind of an interesting method and it comes from uh, the University of Waterloo and this is how they would tell their students to do it. Am I on the page? Ooh, not there. Okay, sorry. Okay, so the reasoning is that L has a direction vector D, right? Your line has a direction vector and what we're going to do is we're going to find the direction vector. And since L is on the first plane, then N1 must be orthogonal to D. So L is on pi 1, therefore the normal of 1 must be orthogonal, you know what that means, it just means perpendicular to D. Now also L is on pi 2, because remember this is where they're intersecting, so it's on both of those planes, so n2 must be orthogonal to d. And knowing that, that means that the cross product of the normals is going to give me the direction vector for the line. So maybe you're a big fan of, of finding, um, finding the cross product. So remember, it's also good practice for you, right? Because you might not have done this for a while. 2 minus 1, 1. 2 minus 1, 1. I write the normals out. These are all 1s. I get rid of the outside ones, and I do the crosses of these. And remember, you multiply on the way down, and you subtract on the way up. So that means that N1 crossed with N2 is going to give me minus 1 minus one more, so that's minus two for the first term. This is one minus two is minus one, and two plus one is going to be three. So this is the direction vector for my line. Pretty easy, right? Or I could change this to be two, one, and minus three, and that's an okay thing to do as well. Multiplying the direction vector by a constant is quite legitimate. Okay, so now I have to find a point on the line. I've got the direction vector. So for point, we're going to set one of the variables, and this time I'm going to set z equal to zero. If I set z equal to zero, oh, I don't have the equation up here anymore, so I'm going to write that out. Um, where am I going to put it? Right here. So I had pi 1 was 2x minus y plus z minus 1 equals 0, and pi 2 was x plus y plus z minus 6 equals 0. So if I set z is equal to 0, then what am I left with here? I get 2x minus y is equal to 1, right? That was easy. I set this to 0, I get x plus y equals 6. And if I add these two equations together to eliminate the y's, I'm going to get 3x is equal to 7, so x is equal to 7 thirds. Okay, so if x is 7 thirds, what's y equal to? If x equals 7 thirds, then 2 times 7 thirds minus y is equal to 1, so I'm just plugging it into this equation here. So it's going to give me 14 over 3. I'm going to bring it to the other side, uh, or maybe I'll bring this one this way. Okay, so I have uh, 14 over 3 minus 3 over 3. That's going to give me 11 over 3, and I bring the y to the other side, so y is going to be 11 thirds. So now I have everything I need. I've got a direction vector, and I have the three coordinates of the points. So x is 7 thirds y is 11 thirds, and z was 0. Now remember, on the line, there's many, many points, right? So, like I said, if you get a different point, you can always check. 
So let's say, um, I'm going to move this up a bit because I want just a little bit more room here. So that means that x, y, z, so my line is going to be equal to my point, which was 7 thirds, 7 thirds, y was 11 thirds, and z was 0, plus t times 2, 1, minus 3. Okay, so on the other equation, we had this. So you can see that if I multiplied everything here by 2, if I multiply this direction vector by 2, I would have had 2, 1, minus 3. But my point is different, right? I had 0, 5 halves, 7 halves. So let's see if this point, this point, is on this line, right? So we should get the same answer. Right? We should get the same answer for t. So it's just some multiple of t that's giving us a different point. So um, let's test 0, 5, 5 halves and 7 halves. So I'm going to say, um, let's use this one. So x is equal to 7 thirds plus 2t, right? Right here, 7 thirds plus 2t. But my x answer from the other calculation was 0. So 0 equals 7 thirds plus 2t. And that means um, 2t equals minus 7 thirds. And t is equal to minus 7 over 6 right, if I divide by 2. So now if this is true, then all the other points should have the same t value. So if I said, okay, y was 11 thirds plus t, and my y from the other calculation I did, I got 5 halves. So 5 halves minus 11 thirds is going to be equal to t. Right? I'm just bringing this over. So in terms of 6, that's 15 minus um Let's do it. Let's do it. 15 over 6 minus 22 over 6 is equal to t. So t again is minus 7, 6. So I just wanted to make sure you understood that, you know, you're going to get different answers. So if you write a test and you think, oh, I got the wrong answer, maybe it's not wrong. You just did a different way. So z in this case, so z is equal to minus 3t, minus 3t. And my z is 7 halves from the other calculation is minus 3t, so t equals minus 7 6. So I just wanted to make sure that you understood that there could be many different solutions for the um, equation of your line. The direction vectors are going to be the same or scalar multiples, but the points could be very different. So again, don't, don't worry your little heart over that one. Okay, so that's two ways to do it. You either use elimination to get rid of one variable. You set one of your variables equal to t, write the others in term of t, and then solve for your the variable that you eliminated in terms of t. And then you have the point and direction vectors from there. Or you could take the normals, do the cross product, and then solve by setting one of your variables to zero and solving for x, y, and then there you go. Okay, so I'm going to do one more. I had another example that you could do. Let's do, I've got my next lesson lined up there for you. We're going to do matrices. You'll be very excited about that. Okay, so let's do this one and maybe you want to write it down and then just go try it. So I have x minus y plus 2z is equal to 2, and x plus y plus 2z is equal to minus 2. So that's pi 1, pi 2. Okay, so let's do it the um, elimination way first. Okay, so let's do, hopefully we have room to do it all on, on this one. Okay, so we're going to draw a line here, and we're going to eliminate one of the variables. So your choice is to either add them up or subtract. Subtract, you'll get rid of x or z's, get rid of both of them. We don't want to do that. Let's just get rid of one of them. 
Okay, so let's let's um, add them together. So that's going to give me 2x plus 4z is equal to 0. Okay, so let's let um, z be equal to t. So if I let z be equal to t, that means 2x plus 4t is equal to 0. And I bring 4t to the other side. That's going to be minus 4t and divide by 2. So x is equal to minus 2t. Okay, so we let z equal to t. We've got x is minus 2t. And we're going to find y now. So we're going to plug these back into one of the equations. So I'm going to plug it into the top one here. So let's do minus 2t. And we're solving for y. So minus y plus 2t, got the same thing, equals 2. OK, so minus 2t plus 2t, that's 0. So minus y equals 2, so y is equal to minus 2. OK, so now don't worry that you don't have t's, because remember that just means it's a 0 for your, um, your coordinate on the direction vector. OK, so therefore x, y, z is going to be equal to, so with my x, I have 0 for my point. And I'm going to put the other one out here. t times minus 2. So 0 and minus 2. y is going to be minus 2 and 0. And z is t. So z was 0 plus t and 1. Okay, so there's your equation. That was pretty fast. Now, maybe you might want to check to do it the other way. I'm just going to do that for you anyway because you can turn it off right now if you said no I like doing it this way but if you like the other way let's write it out so we have um, 1 minus 1 and 2. 1 minus 1 2. So I'm writing out the normals so I have 1 1 2 1 1 2. Still got the last ones so n1 crossed with n2 is going to be equal to minus 2, minus 2 more, that's minus 4. And so that's that one, and this is going to be 2 minus 2, which is 0. And this one's going to be 1 minus minus 1, or 1 plus 1, which is 2. So take a look at the direction vector we had way up here. So we had minus 2, 0, and 1. So if we divide this by 2, this is minus 2, 0, and 1 as well. Okay, so once we've done this, we can say, okay, well, let's let um, z equal to zero. So if z is zero, I moved my camera around a bit and I'm all off kilter here. So if z was zero, then I would have x minus y is equal to two. And I let z equal zero here, and I would have x plus y equals minus two. If I add these together, I would say 2x is equal to 0 and x is equal to 0. So that's one coordinate on my point. Um, z is 0, so we have z is 0, we have x is 0, and all I have to do is find y. So when x equals 0, I get minus y is equal to 2 and y is equal to minus 2. So there we go. We have 0, minus 2, 0, and we have the very same direction vector. So that's just showing you there's different ways to do it. Um, I like them both. I kind of liked this cross product one, but I'm getting to like the t set x equal t or z equal to t as well. Okay, so I hope that helped you. The next lesson I'm going to do is I'm going to teach you how to do matrices. Um, matrices are how we're going to be solving our um, three planes, intersection of three planes, and it's it's similar to what is in 9.2, but I find that 9.2 is a little more confusing.
And a lot of teachers will use matrices because when you get to university and you've already done matrices, you're going to find it much easier. I taught my student matrices and then when they got to university, they were really happy because they said, that's what the teacher was using and now I know how to do it and everyone was lost except your class. So it's the same kind of, it's the same basic understanding except we're using matrices instead of um, eliminations using three lines with three unknowns. Okay, so see you in the next video. Have a good day.